Welcome to Flip Bike, where we find great deals on used bikes, fix them up, and flip them for a profit. I'm your host, Seth. Let's go have a look at today's bike. So I was browsing Asheville Bike Market looking for our next flip bike and found something very interesting. It's not a bike, it's a guy looking for a bike for his daughter. So I sent him a message and I said, I have the perfect bike for your daughter. Why don't we meet up Saturday morning and see if it's the right bike for her? And he said, yes. And so it seems I have put us in a difficult situation because I don't actually have that bike. I do have a lead though in Spartanburg, a GT for 300 bucks. It looks like it's practically new. So let's go snag it and see if we can make it work. Yeah, it looks good. Thanks so much. Yes, sir, you're welcome. All right, thanks. So this GT was a slam dunk. It's a 2020 model, barely ridden, and it was only 300 bucks. He just had this bike for a while and never really rode it except for in front of his house trying to beat his last skidding record. The rear tire has some huge bald spots on it, and that seems like the only part of the bike that is worn out. The cassette looks like you can eat off of it, the chain looks brand new, and there's no dirt on the down tube. This thing is mint. As I said, we have somebody in mind. We're building this for a young girl. Now, I spoke to her father, and it seems like she's kind of a shredder. So she's gonna be looking for a more serious drivetrain and a more adult bike than what she's on right now. She's stepping up from a 24 inch. I'd also like to throw a shorter stem on the bike for a snappier feel and replace some of the heavy steel components on this bike with lighter ones so we can give it a reduction in weight. I want it to be something she's proud of and feels confident on. So we can do some simple things to reconfigure the color scheme and make the bike look more grown up. So before I start ripping apart this bike to show you what I have in mind, I've got one thing I've got to do. So when we got this bike, the rear tire was already shot, but it's now decimated. And so my job here is done and it's time to actually start working on this bike. So starting weight is 14.6 kilograms or 32 pounds, nine ounces. So if we're dealing with an old bike, we're taking clapped out parts and replacing them with new working ones. But in this case, we're taking brand new parts off the bike, like these perfectly good handlebars. We can actually assign a value to these and get kind of a discount on the parts we're putting on. I wanna put these $40 Crank Brothers pedals on the bike, but I'm taking off a set of perfectly good platform pedals, so we can assign a value of 10 to these. Now I've only spent 30. That will give me the justification to make this bike really good. For the growing rider that's getting this bike, we wanna make the color scheme a little more grown up. And so I'm gonna peel the decals off of this wheel. Hopefully they peel off in one piece, which they don't appear to be doing. On to the last resort, adhesive remover and a plastic scraper. Let the fun begin. Hey, thanks for the help with those stickers. I can be there for you. I think these wheels look way better now, even better, and we won't have garbage all over the trails. A rear tire with a faster rolling tread does tend to work really well, and so we're gonna use this. But for the front, we're gonna use this really good Vittoria tire. It's used, but it's pretty much brand new, and at one point, I think we even had soy milk in it. It's going on the front of this bike, and it's gonna be a major upgrade. So one of the things I'm gonna do is put a wider set of handlebars on there, very slightly wider, and a shorter stem. What that's gonna do is bring the bars a little bit closer to her and give her a little bit more leverage on the front wheel. Now the spacers that fit on the top of the steerer tube are these GT ones that came with the bike. I'm gonna replace them with these carbon spacers, indiscernibly lighter, they obviously look a lot more serious. I 
think we're gonna go way over budget. I had a box three, that's 200 bucks. Bike is 300, now we've spent 500. Ugh, I kinda wanna change the suspension for. We are gonna have to dig through the parts bin. I found a used cassette from an old bike with a 50 tooth nine speed on it. Is it a nine speed? One, two, three. I found a used box three nine speed derailleur. That'll work with this. I found a chain. Let's see how much better we can get this chain looking. So if you look at any of my higher end mountain bikes, they have what's called a one by drivetrain. That is to say there is one chain ring up front and then a cassette in the rear, which is where all of your gears are. At the entry level, you normally find three by drivetrains. It sounds fancier, but it's actually heavier, noisier, and more difficult to use. It's all one piece riveted together. And even if you started drilling it out to remove chain rings, they wouldn't work right. And so for 40 bucks, I have this. It's a set of replacement crank arms and a single speed chain ring. This is gonna be much more reliable, much smoother, much easier to use, and way lighter. Pretty cool that we were able to cobble together a one by drivetrain that works awesome and has plenty of range. Every good drivetrain has a good set of pedals. Now, what makes these better than the ones that were on the bike? Well, first of all, they got better bearings. They prevent dirt ingress, and when you're going through water and dirt, kind of nice for your pedal to work smoothly. Also, these plastic pedals with the nubs built in, if these nubs get damaged, you're not gonna have any more grip on the pedal. On these pedals, you have metal pins. They grip your shoe much better, and when you're going downhill really fast, that's important. If any of these get damaged, you can just unscrew them, replace them. So we're gonna do an even swap for the seat. The existing one's got all this neon on it. We're gonna give it a more grown up look with a murdered out black seat. So we're building this bike for a growing rider. I want it to be special and I think we can do better for her than this fork. Elastomer forks have basically a hot glue stick inside. It doesn't feel so good. This is an inexpensive air fork that I found online. I've experimented with these before with good results. And best of all, it's an air fork, it's adjustable. So if you're, let's say a 10 year old girl and you weigh like 60 pounds, we can reduce the air pressure so that it actually compresses and absorbs shock for you. We don't know what company really makes it. It's just kind of off label and black, but I have something borderline unethical we can do. I have got a Fox 34 decal kit. I just want to see what it looks like if I put it on this fork. She wants her bike to look cool. She wants her bike to look grown up. It looks kind of legit. I got to make sure that this gets approved by the ethics committee. This is so, this is one of the coolest bikes we've probably built here in terms of how it looks, how big of an improvement it made. I wanna put a Berm Peak sticker on it. Let's put a gloss black Berm Peak sticker on the flat black here, it'll be barely discernible. Only anybody who's watched this video will know that it's there. That's super slick. It's not straight, but it's super slick. <laughs> well, before we stare at it, I gotta take it for a test ride and make sure it's a proper mountain bike like I'm claiming. <laughs> this is so much better than the suspension that came with it. It's like my size, I, I really like the geometry actually. Oh, this bike feels right. I'm bummed to give it up, but we're actually selling it. No, we're not keeping this one. Let's go give it a real test. Ooh. 
I case pretty good. All right, let's try it again. I think if there was anything to shake loose, we, we would have. So this is a sweet ride. Yeah, time to stare at it. That's over two pounds less. All right, I see them out there. We'll see if they like this bike. How you guys doing? Bill, good to meet you. Good to see you. Scarlett, how are you? So Scar, this is what I was telling you about. See how big this back cassette is? Yeah. It's got authentic Fox labels on it. Just yeah, every detent is a setting. It's just a compression damper. Why don't you take it for a ride? So they ended up taking the bike. She loved it, it shifts smoothly. She was impressed by how light it was. And you could plainly see that that fork we installed was really doing its job. So clearly we made that GT a much better bike and we were left with all these parts that we can use on future bikes. The question is, did we make a profit? Well, I've got our notes right here. We spent 300 on the bike, 40 on the pedals, 100 on the drivetrain, 40 on the cranks, 15 on the handlebars, 15 on the seat, 117 on that new air fork, $5 on miscellaneous hardware, and $50 on the tire, for a total of $682, but we got credits on the parts. 15 on the seat, 15 on the handlebars, 25 on the drivetrain, 60 on the fork, 10 on the pedals, and five on the stem for a total of $130. We sold the bike for $650 and made a profit of $98. That's a huge improvement from last time. Now, I think we could have made more on that bike, but we got a little too personal and I really wanted to do right. So next time we've got to get a little bit more shrewd and see if we can make more money. However, I'll take it over negative 120 something any day. As we flip more bikes, we'll learn how to do it better. See you next time. I'll find one. I have one. Oh, here's one. Here it is. <laughs>